this podcast where freedom is cultivated through personal development, where women connect to fuel our futures, and where wealth is created as a byproduct of being well. Imagine yeah. that. Wow. <laughs> I'm your host, Amanda Kingsley, and Tara has this episode off. Uh, I'm here with Jen Heilman. Hi. She's a feng shui expert and a transformational life coach. We're actually doing a program together right now, which we'll talk about at the end of this episode. Um, but welcome, Jen. Thank you. So Yay! happy to be here. I'm excited. Really Thanks fun. for reminding me. I can't believe we haven't had you on the show yet. This is great. So tell us a little bit about how you were introduced to feng shui. Like, oh, okay. who, who introduced you to this cool and wacky concept right. that you can... Wow. manage your life in your space right right so I'm, i you know yeah, what? yeah okay let's go back because okay. i just said feng shui as if people know what it is i said mm. you're a feng shui life coach so tell us what feng shui is and then who introduced it to you okay so feng shui is it's um basically an an assessment of your, it's not, well, feng shui is not an assessment of your home, but it is, um, it's the traditional way to describe it is the art of placement. And so it's taking um, a look at your physical space and seeing how it's flowing, how it's not flowing, and how that's affecting your life. That's probably the simplest way to put it. Um, our space is a reflection of our circumstances so if you have something going on in your life you can see it reflected in your space and yeah it's crazy so i know it's yeah. so crazy we all have Where, a, what culturally what is this it's chinese chinese yeah okay. thousands of years old um and they're i have um you know learned and learned and learned about it and made it um contemporary so that you can approach it from a point of place that that feels comfortable in this modern day world without you know using all of the more traditional cures and all of that kind of stuff so i've been to china twice mm. and uh if anyone listening heard like my recaps of china one of the things that i was most excited about or most moved by and we just did a couple like little tour of a garden or a you know Tenement Square, things like that. And I just found it so incredible how intentional mm -hmm. all of yes. their placement was. Right. It was like, this is placed here because, and I just was so moved by how purposeful and intentional their spaces were. Right. And like ancient ruins kind of right. spaces. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's very cool. And all, many ancient cultures have some form of feng shui and you know whether it's you know just right. like you know the the study of energy right is chi or prana or um um i forget the other one the japanese i think it's ki so there's you know all, yeah. yeah yeah so you know and i was just actually talking with um my sister-in-law who is, grew up in india um Ooh. yeah and they have a form of it as well cool. and so it's it's there it's just that we're it's not aware of it right we're, yeah, we're <laughs> new to putting words to totally. it totally i don't think we're new oh, to it but really we're new to interesting words to it. way to put that yeah i love that right because it's like very innate <laughs> in a lot of people and when i shine a light on what's happening they go oh, oh. of course and it resonates right it resonates somewhere deep that's come up mm -hmm. a few times for me in other places this week um, where people have said like i've come to this new level and i don't have new words for it yeah. like i can't even answer your question because i i only know old words wow. yeah so it's like interesting for yeah. you to say you don't have words for it right all right well people can also google feng shui and get like all those hipster and cool articles, but right. <laughs> how were you introduced to function? So I went to school for architecture and interior design. And so it was introduced to me in college okay. as just like a piece of one of the courses. <laughs> of course it yeah, was. Right. Just to, you know, 
figure out, you know, yeah. if that's something that, um, you know, could be integrated into the, the design, the design, but we, you know, we didn't really dive that deep into it. Um, so it was literally a decade later that it was reintroduced to me. Um, it was at a time where I was struggling, my son, um, had just, uh, was just born. My, my son is my second child and, um, he was born with congenital heart disease. Um, and we were just coming out of all of that where he was finally in the clear, you know, um, his life was, you know, I know, yeah, <laughs> where it was a really difficult time. And, um, so, I was a stay at home mom, you know, because I, we chose to, we chose that path. And also, um, because of my son was sick, that, that was chosen for us as well. And so, um, I needed something and mm. I always loved design and architecture yeah. and interior design. And so I was missing something, um, more spiritual side in my life. And, um, his experience and my experience with him opened up things like crazy um, for me mm. spiritually. But um, the feng shui, when I found this book, um, it was Jamie Barrett's Feng Shui Your Life. Mm. And that connected the dots for me with all of those pieces wow. that I loved with yeah. um, the design, the architecture, the interior design, the, and then the spirituality. And wow. it connected things in a way that just like you get that snap, right? And you're like, oh, okay. So I started experimenting in my house, right? Because um, I, you know, I wanted to connect back in. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't put words to it at the time, but I really was craving um, some form of connection to um, the spiritual side or to a deeper place within myself or a higher power. I'm, right, you know, and right. so um, this was an avenue that made sense for me. Um, did you tell your husband that you were swaying or did you just kind of <laughs> secretly do it while he was at work? It was mostly, <laughs> it was mostly in secret, you know, um, not in secret, no, but yeah, like, no. yeah. It's, it's just a thing you did when you were home. Baby right. It's just like. Yeah, it was definitely more <laughs> subtle, and that's what I love about feng shui is that it is very subtle. Yeah, and um, people don't have to know. You know, they, it's not like the way I approach it is you wouldn't know that a space was yeah. shwayed, as we call right. it, um, because it's not obvious. There's not like you know, Chinese flutes or, right, um, right, right, <laughs> or, right, or a Buddha, Buddha or, statues <laughs> all over the house, <laughs> or bamboo, or, you know, it's just not like that, and so it's more an assessment of the flow, and, um, you know, finding that theme, so at first, it was just cool. the art of placement, and yeah. then as I got deeper and deeper into it, I found that um, there was just much deeper connections to how I could help people discover their stories and their themes and, yeah so. do you know any other so Jen has this really unique um now I attribute it to you as a feng shui <laughs> practitioner but maybe all feng shui practitioners do this like you know and I don't know if practitioner is the right word to, uh, consultants I don't know. yeah it's anyway <laughs> she has this really unique way of seeing someone's space and identifying the places in their life where they're struggling or they're stuck or there's old stories. Um, it's incredible. Is that something that only you do or do other consultants, designers, I don't know, woo -woo traditional people do that? I believe that um, I have run into one other um, practitioner uh, who I was amazed that he spoke the same language oh, okay, that I did, cool. right? Yeah. But until then, and that was just recently, um, until then, I had not really heard how I speak of it into the, the level that I do. Um, but there is, yeah, I mean, I think that you can go into a space. I think most practitioners can go into a space and say, hey, what's going on in your love story, right? right and, right, you know, right. that kind of thing. You can look, <laughs> if your love area is missing, right? You right. can you, you know, of like, course. what's going on there? But I, I think there's a, 
a, I have a little bit of a tweak on it. Just like, yeah, everybody has right. their own unique take on it. Yeah. I love that. And I've actually done a lot of feng shui with Jen for years. And it wasn't until this spring <laughs> that we, um, we dug in as part of the new program we're creating. And I found this whole new story. Well, she found this whole new story uh, that we identified together and are tackling. And so there's just layers and layers and layers. Right, but right. that's when you get like really into it. Like I'm really into it with you. So I've uncovered this really deep story, but there were many things I did long before that. Right. So let's say somebody came to you and they were just curious about feng shui. They weren't like, I haven't been in a serious relationship for 30 years and I'm ready for love in my life. But they, it wasn't that. They were just like, what is this? And will it help me? So they didn't have a specific concern, mm. but they did do some art of placement and some work with feng shui or with you. What might they feel like before? And then what might they feel after? Mm. Wow. So a lot of times, just using that specific example, um, they are setting up their space in a way that they are repelling love. Oh, right? in the, yeah, right, in, if that it, were their concern. Right, if right. that was their concern, yeah, right. just to, um, to use, sometimes it's easier to use examples to, to explain the situation. Right. But they, um, you know, why can't I, you know, find a relationship, why can't I be successful in a relationship? And yeah. they're looking at the outside, you know, like that they're not um, the responsible one for it, right? right? And this is a reflection of their own energy and what they're putting out into the world. Whoa. Yeah, so we can, and I can show that to them in their space. We can take direct examples from their space and, um, you know, I, have had people that have um, a photo of, you know, a woman standing by herself longingly looking out into the distance, you know, right. into the middle or distance. Or a collection you know? of horror movies or something. Right, exactly, <laughs> right? There's like these, this evidence and it's almost as if you're that, like we just talked about that, that innate connection that we have to our space that we're, we can't quite put words to yet in our own culture that is that innate connection where we're taking that energy and we are repelling that love right, scenario right. because we don't think that we're worthy of it or whatever the deeper story is. That's what the beauty of feng shui is, is that we can peel back those layers. Like you said, we, with your work, we've been in this for years, right? Right. But we started with this like kind of top layer yeah, and we've slowly yes. been peeling it back and right. now we're in this like, oh my God, right. this story has been with me since I was 12 or something, right? Is what you <laughs> discovered. And, and you're able to make the, the tweaks and the shifts to see where that's showing up in a lot of different places in your life and to eradicate it, yeah. right? To pluck it out and yeah. to move it. So, um, so feng shui is a way to become aware yeah, I things. like with the horror movie or the like picture of yourself alone. Um, I like I know as a receiver mm. of the work of the suggestions. Sometimes you're like, well, that's the only place I can put them. Right, right. <laughs> you get really defensive. You do. Like, but I really like that picture there. Right. And the reason you like it there is because you're comfortable. And if you just kind of open and chill out, <laughs> you can find a new place for your horror movies. Right. But I know that in receiving the work, like almost always, or say you went and you Googled after this interview and you researched and you're like, well, this isn't going to work for me because that's the only place I can put my garbage. Right. There's this like defensive thing that happens yeah. because it's what we're used to. It's what we're comfortable with. And we're like, change, change, right. <laughs> can't change. Yeah. And it's um, the ability to see outside of that box. Yeah. So I just want to yeah. throw that out there for yeah. anyone listening. If that happens to you, know that that's part of the process, whether that happens working with us or with Jen or on your own. Um, 
try and move past that because I know as someone who's done the work that that's almost always the first thing. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. but yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, and, and I ex have experienced that myself because, because we cannot see our own blind spots, our own blocks. Yeah. I have worked with a feng shui professional to come in and take a look at my space from the outside point of view, because, you know, I, I'm human. I don't, yeah. you know, I can't see my blind spots. And so when they um, looked at my space and they told me those various things, I was like, you know, you thought you feel yourself <laughs> posturing, like, you know, like, like, well, I'm not going to build an addition. Yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? You know, or that was, you know, my grandfather's or, yeah. you know, and, and as, you know, right. as a feng shui practitioner, you're, you're very cautious to ask someone what they feel about a particular item, you yeah. know, and before you just dive in and say, you can't have that there, you know, like, <laughs> right, you just right. don't do that. Get you know? rid of that <laughs> ugly painting. <laughs> right, exactly, <laughs> that just doesn't happen. So, um, but yeah, when you, when you are in the middle of it, you do find yourself posturing and, yeah. you know, into the yeah. defensive. Mode. I kind of went off track. So that was a really good example of like the love situation. Mm. But what if somebody was like, pretty happy in their life but mm. they were just curious mm -hmm. like what might they feel before and after because I think the first time I worked with you with feng shui I didn't have any concerns like I wasn't right. like hey Jen this isn't working I was just like oh feng shui that's interesting I'll try it right right exactly <laughs> um, and I noticed all kinds of shifts but I didn't mm. come to you with a specific problem it okay. was just yeah. like maybe my life could feel better. Right. I don't really know. I've never felt better. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. You're like, you're at a certain level. You don't know what's next or what you're capable yeah. of or what you're, you know, what level you could rise to. Right. right. And so, um, yeah, I, that's a really great point And that's a really great question. I feel like um, for me and my own experience, it raises my energy level, mm -hmm. right? Like I feel so much, uh, <laughs> right? You feel like so good and confident and so you true. feel like you're in the flow and things are happening for you. And, you know, life is showing up for you in ways that yeah. you get excited about it. Right. And you're like always in the right place. At the right yeah. time. I know, um, so because Jen and I are running this program, we've been doing the work with each other for six weeks now. And um, I've been doing a lot of work in my house and I'm looking because we're in my house now. So I'm looking over and my floor needs to be vacuumed so badly right now. <laughs> it's like covered in crumbs and dog hair and whatever. But my mom came over the other day and she's like, oh, you did so much cleaning. And I'm looking at the floors like, have you looked down? <laughs> <laughs> but she could feel it yeah like right. she could feel that shift even though like and she said it as if my house were really clean right. not as if it were picked up and it's not right. <laughs> like, right. it needs serious vacuum and like window washing and all that stuff let's see <laughs> um, <laughs> but she didn't see that because the space felt so good to her she was like oh you've been cleaning right. like nope right exactly yeah. um, so i just think that was a cool example of how not not only do we feel better in our spaces after we apply the practice other people feel better yeah. in our spaces and that goes like i asked you earlier um did your husband know you were doing it like yeah. he probably came home and felt, felt better it, right? yeah. <laughs> but he didn't necessarily know why and i mm -hmm. i think that is such good proof that it's not like a like a placebo thing like right. oh well we did the work so now we feel better Right. Well, when we do the work and someone else feels better, right. it's like, oh, there's something, something to, to this. this. Right. Exactly. I think that's yeah. so interesting. Um, Every time I do feng shui, right, because it is a yeah. practice and it's a lifestyle. Yeah. Um, you Every time I shui my house, um, my kids will come home and be like, ooh. What'd you do, mom? You know, yeah, they're, they're right? used to it, but they can't see where what I did, but they 
feel yeah. the shift. Right. Yeah. I mm-hmm. love that. They can't see it. So they're mm-hmm. not like, oh, mom, you moved the couch. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they're just like something. <laughs> Which I did different. do recently, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's not common. <laughs> but yeah, it's true. But it's not but, obvious. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Right. All right. So is there something that someone listening, I'm going to pick like a, since we already talked about love on like a dramatic way, like okay. mm-hmm. I've been single for whatever, mm-hmm. or my, all my relationships keep falling apart. Mm. What about people who are in a relationship, new or long standing, that's pretty good? And they just want to like, because this is one of my favorite places to notice feng shui um, is to give like a little tweak and then like mm. my marriage gets a little peppier. And I'm like, cool. Peppier, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like he's happier when he comes home and like he's, it's just love. Yeah. <laughs> and you know things get better everywhere right so <laughs> so what if someone just wanted to like ignite a little spark mm-hmm. in their love life like a little you know yeah. a little sweet edge um what maybe could they do if right. they're listening right so um i love that you use the word spark because um feng shui is very literal right yeah and so you <laughs> literally can light some candles mm. in your mm-hmm. in your love area um, to spark things up a little yeah. bit. I recently, in the love area of my kitchen, um, I noticed in my relationship that things were, you know, a little cool, right? Yeah. And so I wanted to, you know, warm things up a little bit. And I took a look at my, I noticed I had changed some things in the love area of my kitchen. And I was like, oh, okay. So I was making the correlation between the two. Right. And I shift thing, shifted things and I put a picture of my um, husband and, and I on our wedding day in our like kiss the bride moment into the love corner. And mm. all of a sudden, oh, things, yeah, again. <laughs> things have like been so much more loving, right? Puppier. Yeah, definitely happier <laughs> and peppier. <laughs> yeah. So just subtle shifts like that um, mm. to set that intention. Yeah. Right. And to, um, to add a little spark and it's so easy, right? Like how I just had to call awareness to the fact that things were a little cool, right. Yeah. And that I wanted to warm them up. And so I went to that space and looked at it and, you know, again, raised my awareness around what it was that I was reflecting back to myself and then made the adjustment and literally you know, when he got home, things were better. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you don't, like, I've had times where Jen's asked me to pay attention to a particular area, and I'm like, well, I don't know what to put there. (laughs) So I'll just clean it. Mm -hmm. Just, like, give it a really intentional clean, and, like, be sort of knowing in my head why I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. And that alone makes the shift, but then it also, like, gets my creative mind going and I think of what to put there. Right. Um, So even just like cleaning a corner or like if it's your, you know, something. So, yeah. So like, I guess to wrap that up, it was maybe light a candle in your bedroom. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even have to be, um, it doesn't even have to be while that person is home. Right. Like, you know, if you are home or you just have some time where you're not together, like, Light a candle, make the bed. Make the bed. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> make the bed. All right. Make up the nightstands. Yeah. Like something that represents right. um, to give attention to that. Right. And then, yeah. So one thing that you addressed um, that I had a question about for listeners was, can you do it wrong? And you sort of did address that where you said, like, I was doing some feng shui work for something else and then it kind of affected my mm. love area. So mm. it's not that you did it wrong, right. but you were able to notice after doing it, like that didn't, it maybe had results in this part, but it kind yeah. of put a cool edge on the love. Right, <laughs> and that, um, that, what that brings <laughs> up for me is our, there, we have, um, well, in, in the program that we do, we, we have five areas of our right. lives, right? And so we, um, we have love, we have wealth, we have health, community, community and creativity. creativity. And so um, just being human, we 
tend to believe or perhaps it's a story um, and that's something that we're trying to kick everybody out of is that um, if we have one thing, we can't have the other. Right. Right. So there's an imbalance. Right. We can't have it all. Can't have a happy marriage and healthy kids and, and money. money. Right. <laughs> and so that is, a, it's a story. Yeah. It is a story. We are meant to thrive Ugh. in all areas of our lives. Right. We are doing our best we are being our best when we are thriving in all of those areas. And it is a um, story that we have learned that we can't thrive in all of those things. And it shows up in our space, in our feng shui, and it showed up in my space. Right. Right. So, um, you know, my husband's career is flying. My career is flying. And, you know, we're healthy. We're working out. Right. Yeah. We're good in our community. Creativity is Creativity. flowing. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I've got to pull one of those things out. So, pulled out so I pulled out love. Right? Uh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So. so I guess what the point I want to make to listeners, and we're going to have to wrap up here soon, but the point I want to make to listeners is that it's a lifestyle. There's nothing in life that's an easy button. Right? Right, <laughs> like, right. It's not like, oh, I put something pink in my bedroom and now everything's all better. Um, it does <laughs> maybe work that way for like a little yes. while, right. but it's about paying attention and continuing to set intentions. And just because this is really cool and it like, honestly, it's worked to manifest like insane amounts of money into my life and change my marriage and like really cool stuff. Right. Just because it works so easily and beautifully doesn't mean you get to just do it once and ignore it. Right. Like, just like it's anything a in life. practice. It's well, a way you wouldn't to expect to work out once and reap yes. the benefits. Right. right. You or eat a keep, salad one right. day a week. Like, and and reap the benefits. Right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Or do your job for an hour and expect a full paycheck. Like, right. You just, it doesn't yeah. add up. You have to find the yeah. practice that works for you and maintain right. it. Yeah. And so let me allow that to lead into our program that we're running together because we, we had been working side by side for years. Years. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden it made sense to yeah. work together. And what we both realized was that I was doing this sort of life coaching work with clients. Um, and it was awesome. And Jen was doing this feng shui work with clients and it was awesome. But there was a lot of like repeating the work, repeating the work, repeating the work that when we put the two together, it's not that we don't have to repeat the work. Like we always have to be doing it, but it all became more sustainable. And like, there was like this glue that happened. Right. <laughs> or like, the results too, right? Yeah. There was results that um, so we much weren't, bigger. Yeah, that were so much bigger and we weren't necessarily getting those bigger results on our own. But when we combined yeah. the two things together, it was like kerpow. And I just think like the <clears> results <throat> were like, I'm imagining, because I'm like a vision person. So as soon as you said that, it's like I saw these roots. Yeah. Like the results were really grounded. Yeah. They were like, different in this way that was not so surface right. and that we could bring this mindset work this attention to our thoughts and our intentions and our purpose with the placement of our objects and our home and like seriously make an impact <laughs> right right exactly so yeah. a sustainable that, impact too mm -hmm. right a lasting impact yeah and so jen and i are both really intuitive people in that like we kind of get a feeling and we follow it. And I think what happened for us, we were both like, huh, this could be interesting. And so we followed it and then it started blowing our mind. Right. We were like, whoa, yeah. that was a feeling for a reason. Like this exactly. work is like, unlike anything we have ever experienced. And both of us have been doing personal development work for so long. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> um, and can I just say, I totally blew my house out feng shui wise before you approached me. <laughs> I was looking for a shift. I was, my dad had just passed away and um, I was looking for a major shift. Just I didn't really know what it, that shift was, mm -hmm. but I had been 
in the back of my mind, setting an intention to do um, this work with someone else that could bring that power in. And um, now that I see it, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, um, and I just blew my house out. Just saw the themes and just really went to work. Like you concept. hired someone to yes. help you see like. my blind spots. Because we yeah. can't see our own stuff. Yeah. So even if you go read an article about feng shui, you might be able to make some changes. Right. But it's when someone else says, did you see this? And you're like, oh my goodness, I didn't even see that. Yeah. So Jen actually hired, I didn't I did. know she did this. Yeah. this. This all again is in hindsight. But yeah. she had hired someone to help her with feng shui. Right. And, and then, and then you can keep telling me. <laughs> like, I mean, not even two weeks tops after I got things put back together after this consultation and really was feeling like surging. <laughs> like, oh my yeah. God, you know, something is about to happen. And Amanda literally shows up. <laughs> and yeah, literally is like, hey, Jen, I've got something I want to talk to you about. And basically formulates it around my work yeah the bagua and every you know all of that and i was like yes i'm <laughs> having a moment i'm having a serious moment right now because i had not put together my own hindsight is 2020 experience <laughs> whoa wait jen doesn't yeah. even know because i'm just realizing this myself <clears throat> So back in March, I hosted a Women, Wine, and Why retreat, and I did some intense mind work myself as I was teaching these women I was with how to do this work, this thought work, this why work, this intense, like, deep inner work. And what happened over the course of that week is that, like, some things really shifted for me, and I left the retreat, and I said, oh my gosh, I need to do a co-coaching program with somebody. And so I did this super intense mind work, mindset work. You did this super intense feng shui work. And the universe was like, now you're ready to work together. <laughs> oh my God. I never put that together. Wow. That is crazy. So <laughs> now we have this program. Um, it's called Connected Growth. Um, I'm really, I believe very strongly in having a one word why Jen's is connect mine is growth and they just fit really beautifully together that just so sense. the program is called connected growth it's a nine week intensive with one-on-one -on -one coaching with both of us mm -hmm. um group work it's just mind-blowing so definitely go to either one of our websites jenheilman.com or amandastarkingsley.com and we'll put it all in the show notes too and check out the connected growth program but for people who are like, I'm not really sure I want to dive into a nine-week program with you two, <laughs> but we promise it's fun. Mm, it's going to be fun. Um, we also have a free, like a really cool free gift right now that um, accesses all five of those areas that we mentioned. Mm -hmm. So health, wealth, love, creativity, and community. And if you, um, it's called, okay. We'll put it in the show notes, but it is at amandastarkingsley.com slash the number five dash feng shui, F-E-N-G-S-H-U-I dash hacks, H-A-C-K-S. So that's a freebie and that'll be up for a while, yeah. but it's a really good example um, of how we work together. Right. A, Address it, yeah, yeah, how we work with the feng shui and the mindset thought work to create a, just a mind blowing life coaching experience for you. Right. So go check that out. It's completely free if you really apply it, and you can apply any one of those areas in your life or all of them. You're going to see results, and please reach out and tell us about them. Yeah, I love hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there anything else um, you want to share about feng shui or your practice or your business before we wrap up? Um, I don't think so. I think we yeah. covered a lot. I would, I would, yeah, we did cover a lot. The, I think the main thing that, that just pops into my head is that you will see results if you go and do these, the freebies, if you read the books, if you do all that kind of stuff. But 
the real magic happens, the real transformation happens when you hire a coach. And maybe that coach isn't Amanda and I, but the real... It's so true. It's so true, right? The real magic happens when you have somebody taking a look from the outside in. Taking a look, and actually that's our whole thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> inside, inside out, out, outside in. in. And so, um, you know, having somebody take a look at what's going on so that they can point that out for you and it opens you up, it brings you back to what's actually going on. And so I think that that's really super important. It is, it is. <laughs> and again, if it's not us, find someone in your life who can give you that perspective, someone with experience, someone with tools and resources, whether you can hire them for a whole program or for one session, you just leave with so much value and it's value that you apply for the rest of your life because it's so hard to do our own work without someone else's eyes. Um, so I'm really glad you brought that up because the, we, both of us <laughs> have purchased and been through many, 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 many programs, <laughs> which are awesome. Mm -hmm. We're so glad we did because we've learned what we can give to you. Um, but, but a lot of them are lacking. Yeah. Right? It's the that one-on-one -on -one -on -one piece, piece that is yeah. so valuable. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's incredible and the price of this program does not mm. reflect the value of that one-on-one -on -one mm. work but we really want to make it accessible to people so we chose a price in which we could give a certain number of people that one-on-one -on -one work and right. still have it be reasonable for their budget right. so um it is it's a game changer all right we could talk all day so let's wrap up thank you so much jen thank you and until the next episode you can find tara and i at creating wealth and wellness um, and each of our individual websites and remember that we did delete our facebook page so find us each on social media and instagram and facebook um, if you get a chance and we'll bring you lots more goodness yay yay